Okay, today you're going to learn how to write a two-step equation from a word problem. Then you'll be solving it just like you did last week. So for the first example, the sum of a number and 9 is multiplied by negative 2, and the answer is negative 8. So we want to start out all of the word problems by um, identifying the variable. Since what we're looking for, and usually the question is stated last, find the number, we're looking Okay, for n, which is the number that would make this true. So we want to start thinking about um, some of the words, and we've already translated some of the phrases into uh, expressions. So we'll look for the phrase, the sum of a number and nine. Okay, and what would that look like, the sum of a number and nine? Well, you look at the word sum, that's the operation. It means uh, adding, so the sum of a number and nine get us started. And that is going to be multiplied by negative 2. So when we're going to multiply this sum by negative 2, we know that we have to use the brackets or the grouping symbols to keep that together to protect the order of operations. And then if you want to put the negative 2 in front or use a time sign and put it after, that's fine. Um, just be careful not to use a x for a time sign. Use the dot multiplication. It says, and then the answer is negative 8. So this whole thing will be equal to negative 8. So you've set up the equation, translating the, the statements into expressions, and now you solve. So we'll distribute the negative 2 to both. So negative 2n minus 18 is equal to negative 8. We'll undo the subtraction through addition on both sides. Bring down the negative 2n and negative 8 plus 18 is a positive 10. The last step is to divide. So you have this step, you're going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. And n will be equal to negative 5. And then you could check that by putting it back into the original equation. Let's try another one. On an algebra test, the highest grade was 42 points higher than the lowest grade. The sum of the two grades was 138. Find the lowest grade. So again, what is it looking for? The lowest grade, we can let that be our variable. So we can use n if we want to, x, any variable is fine. Some people like to use like an l because it said lowest. Um, but if you identify it and you actually write what it is equal to, then there won't be any confusion at the end if you have to find more than one solution. So we'll let this be the lowest grade. Okay. Now what we do know is that the highest grade is 42 points higher than the lowest grade and that we have the sum of both of them together. So we are going to have to write an expression for the highest grade using the variable n because we're going to have to add these together and you know that you want to be able to add like terms. So we can say that the highest grade is equal to n plus 42. And now that both of them together, the lowest grade plus the highest grade is equal to 138. Combining the like terms first will be 2n plus 42 equals 138. Again, subtract one, I'm oh, sorry, subtract 42 from both sides. And you get 2n is equal to 96. I'm going to have to bring this up again. 2n equal to 96. And if you divide both sides by 2, since we've identified n to be equal to 48, that is the lowest grade because that's what we identified the variable. So in this case, um, that's our answer. For example, 5. I don't even know if these are numbered right. And I just checked, and they're not. 
And I'm sure that you have already picked up on that because you guys are all so good at spotting those types of things. But yes, I did delete a few slides in the middle and then didn't go back and renumber the examples. So this is truly example three, even though it's numbered example five, but you can figure that out. Here we go. In a given amount of time, Jamie drove twice as far as Rhonda. All together, they drove 90 miles. Find the number of miles driven by each. So here's one of those examples that it doesn't really matter um, what we identify as the original variable because in the end we're going to have to find both Jamie's distance and Rhonda's distance. So we want to look at the, um, the two girls and see what we can find. So Jamie drove twice as far as Rhonda. So I personally think that it's going to be easier if we identify the variable and this time I'll just go ahead and use R and we'll call that Rhonda. That's her distance. So that when we want to know Jamie's distance, we can put it in the terms right here stated that she drove twice as far as Rhonda. So that would be 2R, miles driven by Jamie. Okay. And all together, which would mean that we would add, they drove 90 miles. So R I'm going to come back here and erase a few things. Just to make it clear for you, I want to actually spell this out as Jamie is equal to twice as far as Rhonda. I used just the J and I didn't want you to think that I was identifying a second variable. So we know that R, which is Rhonda's distance, plus Jamie's distance is equal to 90. Combining the like term gives us 3R is equal to 90. And then dividing both sides by 3 only gives us part of what we need. So Rhonda's distance is going to be 30 miles. Okay, and then when we want to apply this, We need to say how far was Jamie's since Jamie's was 2R, 2R is equal to 60 miles. And then you can also check your work by knowing that both of them together was 90 miles. So always pay close attention to what it's asking because this time it's asking for the number of miles driven by each. So we need two answers for this one. All right. In this fourth example, um, we will be finding the length, or the width actually, because we're given the length of a rectangular map is 15 inches, and we're given the perimeter. So you guys have already worked problems like this. Okay, and we're going to use the fact that P is equal to 50 inches and the length is equal to 15. So the perimeter equation is 2L plus 2W. So if you substitute in L and W and the perimeter, we'll get 50 is equal to 2 times 15 plus 2 times W. You can evaluate this subtract 30 from both sides and then finally the second step is to divide both sides by 2 and get that the width is equal to 10 inches and I do want to note that on problems that require a unit label make sure that you do label it to be precise And the last thing we're going to do is watch a short video of a two-step equation being translated, and this one would have a fractional coefficient. Hi there, this is Mr. Jones, and I'd like to help you today with writing two-step equations. Okay, we've seen how to solve them and the steps that we need to take, so let's look at the writing process. 
Suppose, for example, you want to buy a digital camera that retails for $100. And this price is $17 more than one-third of the name brand version with similar features. And you want to know what is the cost of the name brand camera. Okay, well, the first thing that I'm going to do is just take this problem and see if I can write it into a simple word expression. Okay, I'm going to relate what is written into words that express what's going on. So the cost of the copy, which in this case is given, is this price is 17 more than one-third the cost of the name brand camera. Okay, so once I've just written that out in simple form, then what I need to do is identify what it is that's unknown or what it is that I'm looking for. Okay, well, here's the question. What is the cost of the name brand camera? So that, of course, is the unknown, the cost of the name brand camera. So I'm going to then select a variable to represent that. In this case, I chose C for the cost of the name brand camera. So once I have done that, I should then be able to take what I've written in words, take the variable, and write an equation mathematically to represent that. Okay? So it says that the cost of the copy, well, that's given, $100. So that cost is, I use an equal sign in a mathematical equation to represent is, so $100 is 17 more than, remember more than means in addition to, so I'm adding 17, one-third the cost of the name brand camera. So C is the variable, one-third C. Okay, so there is my equation. $100 is 17 more than one-third C. All right, well, why don't you go ahead now and see if you can solve that two-step equation remember the process that you've looked at and we've learned earlier. So once you're ready, or if you encounter difficulties and you need help, go ahead and hit continue, and then I'll help you with it. Okay, well, let's see if I can capture my work steps here. Okay, the first thing that I want to do is write the equation down to make sure that I have it written correctly. Then I'm going to, the first step is this equation, remember C is the variable that I'm looking for, and that's what I need to isolate. So I need to subtract 17 from each side. Okay, so I've simply written 100 minus 17 is equal to 17 minus 17. Then I can simplify that. So 100 minus 17 is 83. 17 minus 17 is 0. So it leaves me with the new equation, 83 is equal to 1 third C. Well, then the second step that I'm going to take is to eliminate the coefficient of the variable. I need to eliminate one-third, so I need to multiply each side of the equation by three. I remember, when I multiply three times one-third, I simply get one. So I get one C, which is what I'm looking for. Three times 83 is 249. So when I simplify, I get that C, the cost of the new name brand camera, is 249. So perhaps this would be a good place not only to show your parents your mathematical skills in figuring out this problem, but in showing them how much they would save by buying you the lesser version of the camera. All right. Well, I think I'll leave you with that. And if you follow these steps carefully, you should do well. Okay. Okay, I think that you should have everything you need to be able to work on these problems. Um, the one thing I do want to point out is that you're really good at figuring out word problems, but so far you've only been required to solve them using whatever methods um, seem natural. So remember that today you will actually be setting up the equation, so you need a two-step equation first, then solve it. So if you're getting stuck and not sure how to write the equation, think about the ways in, that you would use to solve, okay? Because then you're going to have to set up the equation with the opposite or inverse operation from what's in your mind. Um, because problems like the one that was on that video, when you have, um, I believe the, the problem was that you had, this was 100, is equal to, um, 
to one third of C. A lot of times students will look at that problem and they'll say, oh, that's easy. I just have to subtract uh, 17 and then I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 to find the answer. So if you're subtracting 17, okay, that must mean that you had a positive 17 to begin with, right? And you're undoing that addition. And if you're multiplying um, by 3, uh, maybe it's because in, in a way the way this uh, term is set up is that the cost is being divided by 3, a third of it. So you can think in terms of solutions. We're going to be asking you today to try to slow down and actually write the expressions from the problem, or at least if you know how to solve it, write the inverse operation first in an equation. Okay, so good luck.